Hello and welcome to Creative Connections. I'm Gary Blanchard and today my guest is an artist and musician, Peter Smolinski. Peter, welcome. Thank you. Hi Gary, how are you? All right, so uh, how did you start getting involved in art? In art, um, well back in the day, I was born in 62, so in elementary school we had uh, science teacher come once a week, a music teacher come once a week, an art teacher come once a week. And when the art and science and music teachers came, I was like, yes, yes. All right. It was like the greatest hour or so of the whole school thing. So I guess actually school got me into all of it. Okay. Because I love art and music and science and I'm always trying to combine them. All right, yeah. And I was about to say, you know, as we start looking at some of your art, you can see where the science comes into it. Yeah. So what was the, the first form that you worked in? Um, first off was right into watercolor painting in about third grade, actually. Okay. <laughs> and didn't take it too seriously, but knew that I loved it when the art teacher came and I could do anything and I was painting abstract paintings in third grade. In third grade? <laughs> yeah. Okay. And there's nothing, how, how did did the nothing art really you could tell was anything real. And okay. They were actually into it, the that's, art teachers. That's, that's I good. I had good, very good art teachers and then nothing, just would, I would play a lot of sports and things but I, I was restricted because of uh, birth defects, I can only do a few things, so I mostly got into art and music. But I had a great teacher in um, the last year of high school, and she just let me paint for the entire year. She saw something in the work and let me run with it, and angered all the rest of the kids because they had to work <laughs> with a student teacher on whatever project they had to do. And she would greet me every morning with a smile and say, will you be painting again today, Peter? And I would say, yes, Miss Conway. And, right. and, and she, I gave her all the credit for really kicking me into a lifetime of yeah, abstract yeah. art. You know, and it's so nice to hear because so often it seems like the schools try to get everybody to, okay, here's a picture, now you copy this exactly. Yeah. And it sounds like you had somebody who said, use your imagination. Yes, yeah, she said, just look what, he, and then the other kids would protest and say, why does he get the pain? But he wants, and she'd say, look what he's doing. And he's serious about it. If you were serious about it and you could work the way he does, I would let you paint all year long too. And then one kid actually did that. Okay. So me and this one other guy, Harold, hey Harold, if you're watching, <laughs> Kaufman, uh, we were the abstract painters of Northampton High. And okay. boy, we really got into it. It was so much fun. We would run to the class. And then occasionally, uh, she would have to call our next class and say, you know, he, Peter's working on something and he really needs another 15 minutes. Can you like let him be late to the next class? That's how nice Miss Conway was to that, me. That is really good. Yeah. That is really great. And then um, after the, after I graduated, I had my first big show and I actually found her and brought her to the show and I oh, said, I nice. said, you see Miss Conway, what one of your students did and I had 27 <laughs> paintings in chronological order and we both had a little tear. <laughs> that's, that's, that's wonderful and it's, it's nice you were able to share that. Yeah, with it was her. a really good and, moment. And let her see what she helped to inspire. Yeah. Yeah, she really felt good about it. And yeah. She had asked me at the end of the year if she could have a couple of the paintings I did, and I just gave her all of them. Oh, that's nice. It's like, here you go. Thank you for <laughs> opening that door for me. Okay, yeah. So let's, let's look. Uh, the first things we have up here, uh, these are... Uh, that's a photograph taken of just nothing but light. Um, and... Usually when somebody asks me, how do I do one of those, I say, create a light phenomenon, and then capture it. Okay. <laughs> but I can just tell you more than that. It's just, um, you set your camera for a, uh, however long of a shutter speed you want from, actually, the, most people that do this take very long 
exposures. Some of my best light photography is like 0.3 seconds. Although I've done, you know, yeah. five minute exposures. But if you leave your, your camera open with the strangest settings and find really neat light and um, bounce light off it and capture it over a period of time, you get things like this. Like what I'm doing here is a, a, there's two different types of light photography, transmission and reflection. And this is a reflection shot where I've bounced light off a of piece of holographic uh, paper in this okay. case. And the light coming off it is what I've captured. That is just amazing. And I don't know how well it will come across on, on the screens as people watch this on TV. But, but from here, uh, it's just so vibrant and alive. And, oh, thank you. Uh, you know, it, it just looking at it makes you feel happy. Oh boy, thank you. That's why yeah. I really want to try to entertain the world. That was always my goal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, and what I like is that you've got all these different patterns. You've got kind of like the circular things going on. You have some waves there and then you know, almost like a honeycomb effect. Yeah. Uh, is that the holographic paper that... That and the movement of the paper and the movement of the camera. Okay. And most people that do this will tell you you must use a tripod and I laugh. <laughs> I laugh at them. I'm like, no, I'm doing the dance. I have music cranked. I am moving. I am one with the light. I become one with the light. And I'm moving my camera everywhere. I don't okay. barely ever use a tripod unless I want to get something crystal clear. I use okay. this device called a pixel stick sometimes, All right. which is an image generator. In fact, I've taken, I got known for this 36 foot long painting. I think you saw that on right, my website. Right, yeah. Well, I converted that into light. And I, can have a, I have a picture of that as 36 feet of my painting. And wow. it's made out of light hanging in front of the oxbow down in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> that is really nice. I, I used to work in holography years ago. And okay. Now that it's just so prohibitively expensive to keep a lab going. Oh, I'm sure. Uh, working with light in this way has cost nearly nothing to do. Right, right. So let's look at another one of these. Oh, yeah. You know, I, I'm not even really remembering how I made that one. <laughs> it's like I told you before, sometimes I will literally take 800, 900 shots in a session to get five, what I would call, wow shots. Well, you know, I, I think that's one thing that people don't always understand about photography. Yeah. You know, they think it's as simple as you point, you shoot. But I remember the old days when I had a 35 millimeter camera and you know you would shoot a whole roll of film and you would take it to be developed and you had to wait a few wait, days wait, wait, wait. And, and, <laughs> and then it came back and it was like there was one good shot yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> kind of like an ozzy album there's always one good song <laughs> and the rest are kind of like yeah. <laughs> this one I, I happen to be a big fan of blue oh nice <laughs> And, and I love the blues in there, but I love how it, it blends with all the other colors. You know, and, and then whatever it is that's going on over there, yeah. that the feeling of movement is just absolutely amazing. I think I somehow took this shot outdoors, but I honestly can't remember with what, because literally you can use nearly anything. You know, yeah. I, I, you can go to Walmart and buy kids light up toys and if you set your camera the right way you'll you'll get something like this okay. after a lot of practice and time yeah 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 i go for the pure abstraction where a lot of the people they call it light painting right i call it what it actually is it's abstract light photography yeah, yeah. but um the light painters will generally drive someone in a beautiful white dress some dramatic location and then put its beautiful orb in back of her and like it's kind of like the stairway to heaven of 
light photography. Like I've seen that <laughs> so many times, you guys. It's like, yeah, right, you know, right. I, I just want to show somebody something they've never seen before. Yeah, That's my yeah. goal. So what, what brought you into doing these? Um, the fact that painting kind of takes such a seriously long amount of time like okay. I can work on the 36 foot painting, it's called Tiny, that I got well known for. Mm -hmm. That was a year and a half of work okay. on one painting. And wow. try to keep the flow of that going for a year and a half. Yeah, It's a little yeah. difficult. Right. But, you know, I'm not opposed to very large, challenging projects that seem impossible. It's like, love another one right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah. But there is something to be said, too, for something that's more immediate gratification. With this, at sometimes I can get what would seem to be a glorious abstract painting in one click after I've set up a few lights and uh, yeah. set some controls in an odd way and move my camera to the music in a different way. Yeah, It's yeah. like, bam, and, you know, yeah. And, and that's why I like digital photography Yeah, as yeah. far as um, film photography because I can go take 800 shots and see them immediately. Immediately, you and know then, what you have. Yeah. And, uh, okay, because that way if you need to retake something, you know it then and there. Exactly, and I delete a lot of things on the spot as well. Sure, sure. Yeah, so let's see out. what we have next up here. Oh, this is what I would call, I call them chromandalas. Chromandalas. So it's kind of like a mandala. And on one of my websites, I have about 250 of these. And these wow. are all made from my paintings. I digitally manipulated them. And if you wear these things called chroma depth 3D glasses, the blues sink six inches into the screen, the reds and the... The other things pop way out. You would not believe how 3D <laughs> these things get. I, 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 I will have to try to check that out sometime. Yeah. So you take a painting and then you manipulate it into the yeah. the um, form. The 36-foot painting was actually a, a it was a, a an achievement in painting, and it was also an achievement in photography. The photographer that took the the photos had to. T it was such a large painting that he had to do it in 50 shots. Wow! And stitch them stitch perfectly them to together oh, wow. into a nearly five gigabyte file, which I can put. I can wrap a bus. I can wrap your car. <laughs> I can put it on a, a tie for you. I can make you some sneakers out of that oh, file. Right. Yeah. It's yeah. pretty wild what you can do with that file. Yeah. So at times, I'd, some of these are just regular, normal size paintings, but a lot of these are little crops from the 36-foot okay. painting. And I'll just use filters and yeah, yeah. mirrors and yeah. manipulate them. Okay. And I'll make the colors seriously pop for 3D. Right, right. Because what three, Chroma Depth does, and I don't work for them, <laughs> is uh, <laughs> I think it's really cool. It, it puts every color on its own layer, okay. like Photoshop. And then once you get to know, you know, the reds are way out here and the yellows are here and the blues are way back there, and you know where you're putting things, and then you know how to exactly tweak those colors to make them pop when you get the glasses okay, on. Okay, yeah. You can yeah. get some depth and projection out of that I'll, stuff. I'll bet. Well, it's pretty fun. I have hundreds of examples online of this. Okay, yeah. And, and you know, that's what, what amazes me is, you know, you do a lot of work. I do. And the funny thing is um, I, am, I, I am disabled. Uh, I don't actually work at a normal job anymore. So now I have even more time. To okay. <laughs> you know, some, sometimes things work out like that, yeah. don't they? It's like my disability... In a way, it's like allows me to allows you to be a full time artist. It, it's kind of neat in a yeah. way that you, yeah. know, you can look at it like that. Mm -hmm. It's like, yep, everything hurts all the time, but boy, I have all the time in the world to put into my art and music. And and it's good that rather than worry about the pain and all that, to distract yourself with something that 
touches you much deeper probably than the pain does. Oh yeah, and what, what it is is you, you get into a very meditative state. And I am usually helped by really nice music, uh, like alt country music, like the Jayhawks and oh, okay. Sun Vault and, and people like that. And if I got some really nice music on and things are going well, you just lose yourself in the work. And that's when it's the best. And I have an example of that. I have a piece with me tonight that actually painted itself. Okay, do you, do you want to pull that out and show it's us? It's pretty funny. This painting, um, I don't know if I can take credit for this. <laughs> because although this looks like some wild landscape, what actually happened was I painted about four or five paintings on this piece of black paper so as not to mess up my table. And this was a drum head I painted for a friend. <laughs> all right. And this is all the stuff that spilled out and made its own glorious painting okay, on its so own. It's almost like a, a drop cloth painting. Yeah, I had nothing to do with it except <laughs> I worked on top of this piece of paper and then it, that painted itself. That is really, <laughs> and, and it's, so, you know, it shows you how you know, sometimes the best art happens. Just happens. Yeah. When yeah. You don't overthink it. And this one is called What's Left Behind. Okay. <laughs> Very good. And the stuff that I was painting on top of that were um, little paintings like, like these. Okay. This one I yeah. did for a friend of mine, which I have to send to him for his birthday two years ago. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're watching, here's, here's, a, here's a look at Mark, your birthday present. Here's your painting. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's Very. called Makatari 2. His company is oh. named Makatari. Okay. And he, get, he does my webs, lets me have his software for the, my websites oh, and nice. things. He's a really good friend. We're writing a book together also. Oh, okay. Cool. It's, it's, we're yeah. going to have to call that one fiction, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so here's another one of your chromandolas here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so those reds would be out to about here. Okay. And the blues would be like way deep. Okay, and in. there's various shades of blue. Yeah. Do they... Different levels. Different levels. Yeah. Okay. Yep, different layers. I am going to have to check those out with the, oh, the glasses. I was trying to send sure. you up a pair of, of, of those there. Yeah. They're neat. And they work on anything. Oh, and okay. I had a show at um, the museum in Northampton. Uh, they call it the New England Visionary Artist Museum. It's oh, okay. an anchor house. And they hung my 36-foot painting up in there. And I had just finished making these chromandolas. And I said, wow, I've never seen um, if this works with uh, one of the paintings. And when I walked into the place for the opening, was the first time I put on the glasses and saw that you could then practically swim through the 36-foot painting. Oh, wow. It was the wildest thing. They kept extending the show and extending the show. Oh, was that's all, really neat. All summer long. And this is the New England Visionary Arts Museum? Artist Museum at Anchor House of Artists. It's in uh, Pleasant Street in Northampton. Okay. I've not heard of that. I'm going to have to check that out. It's a pretty neat place. Yeah. yeah. And that's... Uh, that's a, a um, that's a close up of a small painting called Define Define the Prophecy. Oh, okay. <laughs> and and again, the the colors are are just so vibrant. This red just grabs the eye. Yeah, but then there's so much else to to see. Uh, a, a work like this now. How, what, what's the original size of it? Uh, this would be twenty-two by thirty, the same size as the last painting. I okay, showed you. all right. Eight inches, not feet, like I'm <laughs> known for <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and uh, that is an old um, painting from the '80s called Bird, and there's actually. Uh, feathers and shells mixed into that one. And a long time ago, there was this really neat um, newspaper in Northampton called The Optimist, 
which reported good news. Oh, wow. It was unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, boy, we, and, we could use that now, oh, couldn't yeah. we? And this was on the cover of that with, with some pretty neat people like Leonard Baskin and Kevin Eastman had a cover. And okay. There was a lot of really cool artists on there and they had a, a nice crop of this painting on there. Yeah, this is really amazing. There's a, a bird feather that oh, you can okay. really yeah. see there. Yeah, yeah. There's a shell up there. Okay. There's another feather there. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> My weird energy knocked out your screen for a second. <laughs> and uh, you also do regular photography. Yes, and lots of it. Although that's kind of like a light photo. But that's down near um, where I live, near the Oxbow Marina. Okay. And I just let the shutter stay on for a long time because I knew I was going to get the nice reflection in the right. water. Right. And this is a uh, train? Or what is that? It's a, just a boat. Just a boat. Yep. Okay. Yep. I, I, you know, uh, it, to me, it, it kind of reminded me of train tracks. Oh, no. You know what it is? Actually, I thought that was a boat, but that's, um, it's zoomed in, actually, from the actual photo. That is a truck going by on Route 91. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and there's the Holyoke, uh, coal, remember the Holyoke coal? Okay. Uh, thing, there's that right there. All right. Yeah. But boy, I have some amazing photos of Arcadia Wildlife Sanctuary. Oh, really? I wish I could have loaded up a bunch of things for yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, we will we will definitely have you on, you know, a, a, again in the future and, and nice. get some more of that yeah. done. So I'm just going to back us out of here for the moment and get us back to the to the logo. And in in addition to being a visual artist, you are a musician. Yes. And uh, why don't you do a song for us? Sure. Uh, yeah, I've been playing most of my life since uh, fifth grade. I was born with a bunch of tumors, and my mom thought it would be helpful if I work the hand. You, you know, that's, and isn't that a lot better than just doing exercises? Oh, definitely. Yeah, because you, you kind of get this feeling of accomplishing something yeah. by playing. Oh, play one of my songs. This one's called Hit the Ground.
till I hit the ground Always hit the ground Beautiful. Beautiful Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. <coughs> So I want to thank you very much for coming in, and as so I say, nice we will definitely you. need to have you back uh, to, to see more of the, the wonderful work you do. Do you have your work showing anywhere right now, or anything um, coming up? At the moment, I don't. I'm going to be playing a show at Luthier's Co-op in East Hampton, oh, Mass. Okay. on June 26th. It's a Saturday night. All right. And uh, I'm going to not be playing acoustic guitar. I'm going to go crazy with my guitar synthesizer. All right. Which I can play every keyboard sound from my guitar mm -hmm. with my guitar at the same time. And okay. I'm going to have a couple of people playing with me. And All we're, right. We're not going to have any songs. We're just going to improvise the okay. whole show. <laughs> so, Luthier's co op, that was June 26th. 26th. 26. Saturday night, 8 to 9 30. All right. So, uh, Thank you, Peter, and thank you, oh, folks. If you, if you all could, if you would hit my website at www.petersmolenski.com, I'd seriously appreciate it. And I have a new one going up at, there's no www, just petersmolenski.artstudio54.com. It's not fully done yet, but there's more than a thousand pieces of art and 250 chromandalas. All right. Check it out if you get a chance. Okay. <laughs> so join us next time again for Creative Connections. Thanks so much.